think it should be zoomed in anymore? Uh, so in this video, we're going to try and cover the current state of the country and the world um, as far as our impact on the environment around us. We'll call it global warming. I know that's going to ruffle the feathers, but we're going to refer to it as global, global warming. Global climate change. Global whatever, climate change, you know whatever you want to call it. Um, it's happening on a rapid scale. And yeah. we're going to see where we are as a planet, as a country, as a state. Uh, to reverse the effects of it right now. And then go, sorry. No, go ahead, babe. Um, and then talk about some of the things that we can do as individuals to combat um, the devastation that we've had on this planet um, up, up until now. There's so much that individuals can do and that's really kind of what Living Zeal is all about. Um, okay. So let's start with uh, smaller scale. Since we're not in a city right now, we couldn't use the town that we're in, but we'll use the town that our licenses are both in, Boulder, Colorado. They use one of the largest percentages of renewable energy for their energy. They've also made a commitment to be completely renewable by the year 2030. So they're a good kind of marker. Yeah, this is all great and very progressive and moving in the right direction. But let's talk about where all the energy is coming from right now that you're using. There's geese. Where are you guys getting the electricity to, to power your laptop or even just charge your cell phone or turn your lights on? All the electricity and all the power that we use, where does that actually come from? You're plugging your Tesla in to charge it and it, it requires almost 100 kilowatts to charge. Where does that come from? Where is that coming from? So we dug into a little bit of the facts here and we found out that, what was the percentage? We'll put it up on the screen. Well, of electricity. So the electricity in Colorado comes from a company called Excel Energy. Majority, yep. And Excel Energy, their power comes from burning coal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we kind of just wanted to implore you guys to not just look at a lot of these products that are coming out and labeling themselves as like eco-friendly green options, but taking a step further and understanding where does the energy come to generate that. The solar, except for our cat. So now we've gone over a really progressive town, Boulder, Colorado. A little tiny sliver of it is from renewable energy. Right now, as it stands, the current president in office does not want that. He wants coal to maintain and get bigger and grow again. And um, that makes for a big challenge for people like us who live in this country and completely do not agree with that mentality. And so it kind of lends us into a position where it's like, what can we do off the grid to live the life that we feel aligned with, which is having as minimal of an impact on the environment as possible. And that means getting away from all things coal powered or- Yeah, that we can. Yeah. Okay, so now we've looked at the state, let's look at, at, at the world. Let's see how we're doing as a country, as America. As it turns out, when I looked into this, we ranked number two uh, on the list of the countries that promote, that produce the most greenhouse gases, mm -hmm. uh, second to China. And if you, I don't know, if you don't believe in smog and just pollution in general, then look at some pictures of China. So China realized that they had a huge problem because people were dying because of the air quality there. It was terrible, Yeah. Um, absolutely awful. I mean, this, the pictures of the sun where you could barely see the sun through the smog. So they realized they had to make a change and they started producing. They started producing solar energy and wind energy and re renewable energy. And now they're leading the world in renewable energy. 
and we're sitting here, America, the second biggest producer of, of the smog, and we're doing nothing. We aren't doing anything. We're trying to re ignite the coal industry mm -hmm. and that's infuriating as an American who sees the problem that's infuriating mm -hmm. so that I guess brings us to what we can do on a personal level yeah exactly to reverse or not reverse but slow it down and we realize that not everyone can just pack up and move into a school bus or go live off the grid um, so we have a couple suggestions for things that you can utilize in your everyday life if you're just sitting in your apartment or house and kind of interested in this lifestyle but aren't in a position to make the leap into right. completely different energy sources and having to generate your energy yourself. I look at my cell phone differently knowing that I charged it off solar rather than knowing I charged it off coal. Yep. It actually makes me feel different about using my cell phone, which is so strange and awesome. Yeah. Um, a few things you can do uh, are, one thing I did is I got this solar powered cell phone charger, which also charges tablets. And I, I put it in between my window and my screen in my bedroom and then just dangled a wire down. And every morning the sun would rise and it charge it and my cell phone would be charged by the time I woke up and that was completely solar. And that was just one little tiny thing. You can also get these awesome backpacks. Yeah that charge, that can charge your laptops, can charge your cell phones, any smaller electrical devices you have. Uh, while you're walking, they just have solar panels on the back. They're like a little bit of an investment, but if you look at it, it's like 200 bucks mm -hmm. compared to how much energy you use to charge that and where it's coming from. At least you know where it's coming from. Sometimes you pay for the peace of mind. I would like to say for those of you who are living in a conversion right now and are thinking about this lifestyle, kudos and we're going to throw up a couple stats that represent the typical households, um, what, what they use every year compared to what we use every year in a conversion. Yeah, so the stats that we're finding um, are just based off of the electric and water used just within the household, not um, representative. All production. Yeah. It's not a, it's just the number based on what an individual uses inside the house. A big part of how we can save the world is don't purchase products that have been produced and produced and produced and are wrapped and double wrapped and have a lot of waste. Yeah, it really just comes down to what small changes can we as consumers make to shift the market and shift the demand for different products. If we stop purchasing items that are extremely wasteful, such as Keurig things, then those come those products are going to be less in demand and. People who make these things are going to follow the trends of consumers. So it really comes down to you being conscious when you go out and you buy things. Even buying clothing, that's a whole other video, but. That's an incredibly good point. We didn't even talk about that. That's such a good point, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, but you buy clothing. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I no, it's just, okay. Like, being conscious and being thoughtful and realizing that your impact is great and all you can do is what you can do about yourself. And I have definitely been overwhelmed at times thinking like the world is so messed up and there's so much waste happening that what does it matter if I just get another thing that you know and just add to the landfill what does it matter if I'm one person your purchases matter and your voice matters and your the decisions on a small scale yeah they really add up to something tremendous and my mom used to always tell me when I was younger to turn the lights off and I never would because I didn't think about it and I didn't have that forethought to understand well where is this coming from and what's the storyline so we really implore you to if you have young kids or if you yourself don't know about this do the research and find out in your own town or city whether it be in the u.s or in another country find out where your energy is coming from because it'll help you be more thoughtful with what you use and how much you use of it if you know that to power it again you're using coal yes. so weather can be very drastic like we've experienced pretty cold temperatures here uh, but that's the weather that has really kind of nothing to do with the climate on a larger scale exactly. because if you look at it and i'll throw this up here right now this statistic blew my mind 
and I don't want to hear people who don't believe in statistics, just buy a thermometer if you don't believe in this. The past 10 years have been the hottest 10 years on recorded history. Mm -hmm. And this year is no exception to that. We might, it might be cold right now, but it's still going to be the hottest year on record. And we're kind of to the point where we realize that we have to, as a country in the U.S. in particular, and just in general in the terms of the world, we have to move on past that argument. Like, that argument has been made, the facts are there to back it up, and we need to move on to, okay, what can we do? A bunch of geese are coming by, if you guys can hear that. If, if you start making a change, one person changing can affect a multitude of people on a massive scale. So yeah. um, let's keep doing what we're doing. Oh yeah, so if beyond, beyond the bus, what can you do? Yeah, beyond moving in a school bus, because that might not be the best option for you for a multitude of reasons, and that's okay, because there are a million different ways to get off the grid and become, you know, more renewable. I feel renewable. like us and the bus was just a stepping stone to something bigger yeah. and more less yes. carbon footprint. Again, because the, the most environmentally unfriendly part about the bus is the diesel engine, of course. So our plan, um, we made a video about moving to Hawaii, which is our long-term goal, hopefully not too long-term. But leading up to that, we plan on moving to a plot of land in probably southern Colorado, um, which is really kind of like out in the country. <laughs> At this point, not very developed in southern Colorado. And buying a shipping container and building a shipping container because they are fireproof, waterproof, massive, large windproof. Um, you can build them on janky land, slopes, however, however you want to build it, you can build a shipping container home. Yeah, and they can be completely carbon neutral. So um, you can have the structure of a house on land and then you can have a truck come and pick it up and move it somewhere else and the land has been seemingly untouched. We've looked into it. This is a really cool video that I'm going to try and yes. find and put in the description that shows off six really cool shipping container structures around the world right now. Yeah. So we're looking forward to doing that. And that's gonna be our goal. Check out, I'd say May, around the time we get married, we're gonna start going down to look for land. This is gonna be a really cool video, so stick around for that. And yeah. then, um, There's yeah. so many different ways to go about it, whether it be shipping container houses, whether it be tiny houses, whether it be there are like little like utes and all sorts of different things to live alternatively and live off the grid. All right. Hope you guys liked this video. We planned it out and it probably didn't come out exactly how we planned, but sure it's still, hopefully it's informative. Exactly. So thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment below. Please comment below. Let us know your opinions. Let's all be kind here. It's okay to have different opinions, but yeah. let's all come at it from a factual, nice place so we can get more accomplished. We'll always engage if the comments are nice. Exactly. Okay. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye guys. <laughs> Go get our kitties. <laughs>